Hello, this is Dr. Philip Mies, Director of Rheumatology Research at Swedish Medical Center and Clinical Professor at the University of Washington School of Medicine in Seattle, Washington. I am discussing the abstract subcutaneous secukinumab inhibits radiographic progression in psoriatic arthritis. Primary results from a large, randomized, controlled, double-blind phase three study. Authored by myself, along with Drs. Vander Heide, Landaway, and colleagues. This abstract was presented at the American College of Rheumatology meeting in November 2017. I selected this abstract to review because it discusses the primary results of the Future 5 study, the largest randomized controlled trial of a biologic conducted to date in psoriatic arthritis to assess the efficacy of subcutaneous secukinumab with dosing at 300 milligrams and 150 milligrams, including radiographically assessed structural damage progression. A total of 996 adults with active PSA stratified by previous anti-TNF use were randomized to subcutaneous secukinumab with 300 milligrams and 150 milligrams with a loading dose regimen of five weekly injections followed by monthly injections. A third arm was 150 milligrams without a loading dose, just monthly dosing from baseline. And then a fourth arm was placebo. Baseline characteristics were balanced across arms. Approximately 30% of patients had experienced an inadequate response or intolerance to previous anti-TNF therapy. At week 16, placebo non-responders, patients with less than 20% improvement from baseline in tender or swollen joint counts, were switched to secukinumab 300 milligrams or 150 milligrams. The remaining placebo patients were switched at week 24. Primary endpoint was ACR20 at week 16. Secondary endpoints included radiographically assessed structural damage progression measured by modified total van der Heide Sharp score assessed by two blinded readers based on hand, wrist, and foot x-rays obtained at baseline at week 16 for the non-responders and at week 24, as long as, as well as other key outcome measures such as enthesitis, dactylitis, patient reported outcomes, and so on. What were the key findings? Secukinumab significantly improved ACR20 at week 16 versus placebo. Radiographic progression was significantly inhibited at week 24 in all secukinumab arms versus placebo. A greater proportion of patients had no radiographic progression, change from baseline and modified total sharp score of less than or equal to 0.5 with secukinumab versus placebo. 88% in the 300 milligram dose arm 79% in the 150 milligram with load, 83% in the 150 milligram without load, and 73% in the placebo arm. All hierarchical endpoints were significant for secukinumab versus placebo at week 16, except for enthesitis and dactylitis resolution for the 150 milligram without loading dose Enthesitis and dactylitis resolution, which arguably are more difficult clinical domains to treat and see rapid results in, showed highly significant improvement in the secukinumab dose arms with a loading regimen compared to placebo. Subcutaneous secukinumab 300 milligrams with loading dosage and 150 milligrams with and without loading dosage inhibited radiographic structural progression and provided rapid and clinically significant improvements in the signs, symptoms, and physical function of patients with PSA. The best effect in key endpoints was achieved utilizing the loading dose regimen. The safety profile 
was consistent with previously reported with no new safety signals identified. As lead author, here are my additional thoughts and analysis of this study. This large study shows that secukinumab inhibits progression of structural damage, as well as showing efficacy data for all key clinical domains of PSA that have been shown in previous phase three studies, such as future one and two, including arthritis as measured by ACR response and highly significant efficacy in resolution of enthesitis and dactylitis and improvement of patient reported outcomes such as function and quality of life. The future one study, which also showed inhibition of radiographically assessed structural damage progression, had two intravenous infusions as a loading dose versus subcutaneous. So for this future five study, we conducted a large trial to show the subcutaneous loading dose method of administration would also inhibit structural damage progression. Another question addressed in this trial was whether having a five weekly loading dose is helpful. The outcome with loading dose was slightly better in several key clinical domains. This study is consistent with previous trials, the safety is consistent, and it is now a popularly used drug that can be used with confidence regarding efficacy and safety.